Hello chess fans, this is Rick from Chess to Impress with the most famous endgame study of all time with also a lot of practical relevance. It was composed by Richard Ritty from Hungary, not only a great chess composer but also a great over-the-board player. Let's look at what he created in 1921. Here it is, astonishing in its simplicity. Only four pieces on the board. It's white to play and draw. And at first sight it seems impossible, as his king is too far removed from the action and the black king needs only two steps to eliminate the c-pawn, while the black h-pawn will run down the board. If you want to look for the solution yourself, how can white hold this position, put a video on hold. I'll give the solution now. The idea is that the white king can perform two tasks at the same time, which is support his own pawn and try and stop the black runaway pawn. The king will, as we will see in the solution, will develop his power in two different directions. White starts with king g7, logical move, and black starts to run with his pawn, h4, then king f6, and if you now keep running with your pawn with h3, then there is king e7, h2, c7, king b7 to try and stop the pawn, king d7, and both players promote with a drawn position. So on the second move you cannot play h3, but you can play king b6, threatening to take that c-pawn. Then why plays king e5, again with two ideas in mind, supporting his own pawn and keeping an eye on the runaway pawn from black. If you now push your pawn with h3, then there is king d6, h2, c7, and again, both white and black promote, and the game is a draw. If after king e5 you take on c6, then suddenly we discover that white is in time with king f4, and the king is in the square of the pawn, h3, king g3, h2, king takes h2, and the game is a draw. Wonderful in its simplicity, the king approaching the h-pawn, but not in the most direct way, approaching the h-pawn through g7, f6, and e5, to at the same time support his own pawn, which causes black to lose time to eliminate that pawn, and then the king is suddenly in the square of the h-pawn. Wonderful. Reti got inspired by an over-the-board game when composing this study. Let's have a look at that game. This is a game from world champion Emmanuel Lasker against Siegbert Tyrasch from the tournament in St. Petersburg in 1914. So seven years before Reti published the study. The position seems hopeless for White, but world champion Lasker was famous for his ability to save his skin in hopeless situations. And the threat from black is to play c4, and then white has to take. Black takes then back, followed by a4 and c3, and black will promote first, and the white king is too far away. At the same time, white's trump card, the h-pawn, can be stopped easily by the black king. But let's see how the world champion once again lived up to his reputation as an escape artist. h4 he played. And now black has to play king g4 to eliminate the h-pawn. And now the very instructive move which gave Reti the idea for his composition. Lasker played king g6. King f6 looks much more logical, running to the danger side. 
but let's see what would have happened after king f6. After king f6, black, black plays c4, and then if you play king e5, black takes on b3, king d4, a4, king c3, then black just has simply time to pick up the h-pawn, king takes h4, and you cannot go to b4 with white to take the black pawns, because after king g4, king takes b5, black wins with a3, and one of those pawns will promote. So back to king f6, then c4, so king e5 doesn't work. So white has to take on c4, black takes back, king e5, c3, you have to take, and then a4 wins the game for black, king d4, a3, and your pawn on c3 is in the way of the king. So after king f6, black wins, but Lasker played king g6. Well, what good can that do? Well, the thing is that you threaten now to play h5. So black has to lose a tempo by taking the pawn on h4. And also, the white king is now on a different diagonal. We saw earlier that on the diagonal a1, h8, the c pawn, white c pawn, was in the way of its own king. But now the white king is on a different diagonal. So let's see what happens then. So after king takes h4, there's king f5. And if you now try to win with c4, like in the previous variation, then there is b takes e4, b takes e4, king e4. And if you now play c3, b takes e3, a4, then there is king d3. And the king is now able to stop the a pawn. a3, king c2, a2, king b2. And actually, it's white who's winning here, so that would be self destruction from black. So back to king f5. Tarash saw the danger on time, played king g3, king e4, king f2. King d5, king e3, king takes e5, king d3, king takes b5, king c2, king takes a5, and Tarash took on b3. The b2 pawn will go as well, and this game was drawn. So a wonderful concept from world champion Manuel Lasker playing king g6 instead of the much more logical looking king f6 to gain a tempo. The black king had to take on h4. The white king was on the right diagonal and was able to stop the black majority on the queen side. This game inspired Richard Reiti later to make that wonderful study. There's one more position I want to share with you, and that is this one. This is the end of the game between Yates and Marshall from Carlsbad 1929. And we again see the same motive. Black to play. If you want to look how black can save this position, put a video on hold. I'll give the solution now. Frank Marshall played king b2 here. And that is the game, that is the move that makes a draw. If he had played king c2, then white wins with f2, f4. And black cannot stop the white pawn, while white easily stops the black pawn. King b2 gives a tempo, wins a tempo for black, because Yates now had to take on a4. If he had played f4, then it's actually black who wins with a3, and the black pawn promotes first. But after king takes a4, Marshall now played king c3, and that brought the black king in the square of the f-pawn. After f4, king d4, the game was drawn. 
black simply picks up the F bomb. Hope you enjoyed these positions. The wonderful study from Richard Reiti, the game that had inspired him, and then the game Yates Marshall, which was played eight years later with the same team. If you enjoyed this, please give the video a thumb, thumbs up. Please subscribe to the Chess to Impress channel, and I'm looking forward to your comments. I also would like to ask you if you could please share the video on YouTube if you like the video. You also may want to check my Chess 2 Progress channel. The link is in the description box. This is Rick from Chester Impress. Thank you very much for watching.